Common accidents in the home. Burns, scalds, suffocation, and fainting. Careful, please. I don't want you getting burns. That would be an accident. Don't be silly. No one looks forward to an accident, you know. Burns are very painful and are caused by dry heat like flames, hot charcoal, or metal. Oh, like when you hold a hot cooking pan with bare hands. Exactly. But the major cause of burns is fire outbreaks, like when we leave what we are doing here unattended. The fire can spread to the house and burn it down. Plus, things in the house such as kerosene lamps, candles, leaking gas cylinders, and faulty electrical wires can start fires. Hmm. In other words, anything flammable can start fire. Mm-hmm. For your age, I will permit that that kind of reasoning is superb. All right. Since fires cause burns and destruction to property, they should be prevented from occurring by all means. I know one way to do that. Attend to the rubbish while burning to stop the fire from spreading. You keep telling us not to play with fire. Correct. Plus, keep matches and hot stoves out of reach of children. Do not leave children locked in a room alone. Candles and mosquito coils should be placed in their stands. Also, people should not smoke in bed. Thank God I don't smoke. Okay, you mentioned burns are caused by dry heat. So, what is caused by wet heat? <laughs> you are a comedian. I wouldn't call it wet heat, but scalds are caused by hot liquids. Like hot water. Yeah. Therefore, you must be very careful when handling hot liquids. For example, keep hot liquids away from children. Mm -hmm. Do not allow children to handle food in the kitchen. And while opening the lid of a cooking pot, direct the steam away from you. Uh, I'm not looking forward to it, but what if an accident happens? Then first aid is similar for both skulls and burns, since they are both caused by heat. First, dip the injured part in cold water to ease the pain and reduce the damage to the skin. Do not break the blisters as they are supposed to protect the burnt or scalded area from further infection. On small burns, apply some jelly. Cover the injured part with the loose bandage to avoid exposing it to air. But when the person's clothing is on fire, wrap him in a blanket to put out the flame, then seek the attention of a doctor immediately. But the blanket could suffocate him. Then you will have to deal with it. Of course, suffocation happens when the supply of fresh air is limited. It can be caused by poisonous gases like carbon monoxide from a charcoal jiko, a leaking cooking gas, or petrol fumes in a poorly ventilated room. Hmm. Meaning you should cook in a well-ventilated room. Of course, my son. Plus, turning off gas taps tightly after cooking. Do regular checks on the gas tubes, pipes, and burners for any possible leaks. And dispose of plastic bags appropriately. So if I see any leaks, I can fix it. Gas leakage is very dangerous, my son. You must proceed with caution when fixing it. First, check the source of the leakage. Hmm. Put off any open fire in the room. Mm -hmm. But, if you cannot fix it, carry the cylinder out of the house and seek help. Meanwhile, open all the windows for a few minutes before lighting a fire to ensure that all the leaked gas escapes from the room. Otherwise, I can start another fire accident. Well, mm -hmm. I understand suffocation can cause death. And the more reason you should identify the cause and act quickly. If 
Since the cause is due to insufficient fresh air, then get the patient out of the house mm -hmm. where there is plenty of it. Okay. What of a gas leakage? That's common sense. Switch off the gas and carry the patient out of the room. If it is a charcoal stove, then take it outside. And if the person is unconscious, then call an ambulance and rush him to the hospital. The doctors will do the rest. And what if there is no ambulance and um, the victim is lying there unconscious? What do you do? You can still help. In this state, the person has fainted or blacked out. Fainting occurs due to temporary insufficient flow of blood to the brain. Hmm. So one is half dead when they faint. Uh, stop putting it like that. Fainting can be caused by loss of too much blood, anemia, fear, receiving bad and shocking news, mm -hmm. and standing in the sun for too long. Plus, some people are physically weak and faint easily. Okay, uh, I am more interested in how to handle someone who has fainted. Slow down. I, when I talk, you listen. Okay. In handling a fainting situation, loosen all tight clothing while saying good things to the patient. Mm. Remember, the patient is not dead. Place him under a shade with lots of air. Lay him with the head lower than the rest of the body. Avoid people crowding around the patient and seek medical help. Now you're talking. What's for supper today? Always thinking about food. Food saves life. The likes of first aid. So, what have you learned today? A lot of things. Mm -hmm. Burns are caused by dry heat, while scars are caused by hot liquids. Mm -hmm. Keep hot liquids and uh, source of heat away from children. Do not use charcoal stoves in a poorly ventilated room to avoid mm -hmm. suffocation. Right. If you suspect any gas leakages in the house, then fix it. Mm -hmm. Or if you can't fix it, call for help immediately. Fainting is caused by limited supply of oxygen to the brain. And uh, fainting victims should therefore be put in an open, airy place before calling an ambulance. Back to the supper. Ah, very cheeky boy. I am going to prepare managu and ugali. You go do your homework. We will talk after supper. About what? Choking, of course. All right.